Today, I'm going to take you through some of the key core functionalities so you can see if Fieldwire is right for you. You can see I've got multiple projects here. Fieldwire has unlimited storage once you have a license. It's possible to star projects so they come to the top. And indeed, if you're doing multiple projects throughout the year, you can come in and archive them to make this nice and tidy. This still retains the information for you at a later date should you need it, but it also helps keep this project view nice and tidy. We're going to jump into our demonstration project for today. Here you can see we've landed on plans. It's very simple to upload a new plan. You can either select it directly from your computer or you have two-way sync with any of these integrations. What that means is any of the markups that you make to the drawings on Fieldwire will also reflect within the original source of the file. Here you can see we can jump into our drawing. It's possible to add hyperlinks to the drawing, which can really help you in terms of your reporting. So you can see we have progress photos here. There is a video. And it's also possible to upload 360 photos should you want to take your site updates to the next level. Coming here, it's also possible to mark up the drawing. So you can see we've added highlights to these walls here. You can also add shapes. So we're going to add a cloud shape and a text box, say site. So nice and simple to mark up the drawing as you wish. You've got multiple color options here and a purple for private should you just want to make a private note to yourself. If you feel like the drawing is becoming a bit busy, it's possible to come in here and switch off layers so you get a nice clean drawing again. The final thing I want to show you about drawings is the revision comparison. This is fantastic to use to compare the difference between drawings. You can see I've come back to revision one here and it's automatically watermarked with old version. And then I can compare these two and here at Fieldwire, we like to say that red is dead and blue is new. So you can see there's a new doorway here, and this doorway has moved over. This is automatically done by the Fieldwire system. So whenever you upload a new drawing, it will automatically be slip sheeted on top of the, the existing one. The next thing we're going to talk about is tasks. A task in Fieldwire is anything you have to do on site. So it could be clear up, tape and jointing, fitting rebar, anything really. So today we're going to take the example of painting a wall. You can see I've come up to the top left and I'm going to drop a task pin here. I'm going to give this a title. So we're going to call this paint wall. And you can see that first message has become the title of this task. We're going to add details here. So I'm going to add a photo of where we want it painted. You'd hope this photo is nice and clear, but just in case it's not, we can add an arrow markup. Finally, we're going to give this a category. So we're going to call this painting. We're also going to add a checklist just to give them an idea of what they need to be doing on site. So we've got an existing checklist here for wall painting. With this, we can then send clear instructions of the work that we want done. We can also add the date range for when we want this to be done. Finally, and here comes the really important bit, we're going to add an assignee to this task. You can either invite new members who are outside of the project currently via their email, or you can see we've got Brick Astley currently installed on the project. So we're going to assign this task to Brick. What will now happen, and I'll show you this, there'll be a notification pushed over to Brick's device. And we'll take a look at that now. Here you can see I'm on my iPad, though this would also work with any Android or iPhone device. Much like I would get a WhatsApp or an email notification, you can see I've got a push notification of a task I need to do. I can come in, click, and Fieldwire automatically takes me to the relevant task. You'll see just below task 34, I can click on the plan, and you can see exactly where this task is meant to be taking place. I can interact. I can ask clarifying questions.
and I can see that my instructions here are to take a photo before work and take a photo after work. So let's come in and use the camera. I can take a before photo, close that out, and then let's take an after photo. You can see then it's very, very simple to start building a photo audit trail of what's happening on site. Now I've finalized all of the details about this task and ticked off my checklist. I'm now ready to mark it as complete. Here you can see I've clicked edit on the right hand side there, and this is no longer scheduled, but it is complete. You'll see on the device here that verified is grayed out. This is part of the user controls and gives you an extra layer of control in the office to make sure all work is completed to your standards. This is also similarly possible on the tablet device. You can see I can pinch to zoom out here. On the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a small arrow. I can click this and all of the markup functionalities I showed earlier are also possible on the tablet device. You can see it's also possible to drop a task pin. So I can select a pin, drop it in the corner here. And this makes it very easy to lock snags on site. From here, we're now going to hop back onto the office device to see what this would look like. So here you can see I'm back in the office. I'm no longer brick. I'm now Harry again, and I can see all the work that's taken place on site. All of the work is time stamped. I can click into the photos to see more detail there. And I can see everything that's happened. Finally, I can come in and verify this, but I'm going to show you another way to do this. Here you can see we're over in our main task module. This is how you get an overview of all the tasks which are happening on site. You'll see that tasks which are due today are handily marked in due today based on their end date that we filled in. We know that this paint wall is now complete, so it's very simple to come in and drag this over. But similarly, if we knew a lot of tasks were already complete, we can shift click and drag those over. The reason for doing all this is so we can generate reports. So we've kept that audit trail, everything's photographed and time stamped. We know all the details of everything that's happening on site. The reason we do this is to generate reports. So you can hit, see here, I clicked on the button to generate report. In this case, I'm gonna go new report. For reporting, it's possible basically to segment the task any which way you want. So we could just have the paint or painting category if we wanted. We could just have all of the work which is currently on hold. You can see it's also possible to include or remove certain elements of the reports. So for example, for client reporting, you may want to remove messages like Darren's forgotten his hammer. However, you may want to add a table of contents for a bit of context there. Final thing to note here is it's also possible to schedule reports on a weekly or monthly basis. This is fantastic because it allows you to set and forget your reporting. You can set up all of these exactly as you want them and the system will send them out on the frequency basis you require without you having to do anything. What this report would then look like is the company logo and the address of the project. You can write a description of the works that are taking place and you can see very clearly all the work which is taking place on site is highlighted with photos, with timestamps, with messages. So it's very, very clear to anyone reading the report what's going on on site. Right down the bottom, you'll also see that full size plans are included, and this allows you to see numbered task pins. So there can be no question about what's happened on site and where it's happened on site. Final thing to note about these views is it's also possible in a calendar or a Gantt view. This gives you a clear overview of exactly what's happening on site and can be great for scheduling your works. This concludes everything around the task section. So, so far we've been through plans, markups, dropping a task pin, how that would look out on site, and then finally coming in and getting our task overview and our reports. Everything you've seen so far is included within our pro package. The next element we're gonna to move to is the forms, which is included in our business package. Here you can see we've landed within our forms. Now the way to think about forms is any bit of paperwork you're currently using on site, like hot works permits, permit to works, toolbox talks can be replicated within the field wire system and easily generated from templates. 
In regards to creating and managing the forms themselves, you can see it's possible to come in and manage templates. And this is what it looks like in terms of designing the form itself. It's always possible to see what the end user would then use. So you can see possible to interact. We have mandatory fields here. It's also possible to add attachments such as photos, which take your form to the next level. And finally, the important bit, getting that signature sign off, which you can also see as a mandatory field. What this would then look like is a form with your company logo and color, the project address, and you can see all the data that has been inputted here, the date it was completed, the photos, which really give context, and finally, you can see when it was signed and what device it was signed off on. This is really important for creating that audit trail, so it's a really useful feature to have both in the office and on site. That concludes our form section and everything I wanted to show you within Fieldwire today. If you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.